Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part 12 for our Godot Action RPG series. In this video, we're going to be adding in our roll state. In the previous video, we had our attacking in, and uh, but now I want to be able to have some nice movement with rolling around in the room before we start adding in our enemies. So we're going to come into our player scene, and we're going to come into our animation player and we're going to start adding some new animations because we need f all all of our animations for rolling. So we're going to do roll, let's see, we're going to do roll down, new animation, roll down, and this is going to be 0.5 long here, wait. Yeah, that's right. I, I zoomed the wrong way. There we go. And we're going to come into our sprite. And we're going to flip through our frames here until we get to roll. Here we go. Find roll down. Okay, here's the first frame of roll down right here. Key this frame. Come to our next frame. Key, 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 and key. There we go. Now let's create, we're gonna actually save here. We're gonna create a new function and we'll call it roll animation finished. Here we go. We'll say state equals move. Save. And at the end of our animation here, we're gonna add a new track, call method track, player, insert a key by right clicking, insert key, and then search for roll animation finished, and save. And there we go. We don't want this attack to loop, and well, we do want it to loop for now because we need to, we, well, we'll need to set it up in our animation tree. So let's add in roll left, new roll left, 0.5. We'll come back here until we find the first frame of roll left, which is this one, frame 50. There we go. Add a new track, call method track on the player, insert a key, roll animation finished, save. Now we're gonna do roll right. Here we go, 40, create, oops. Let's move this frame all the way back to the start. If you accidentally key it in the wrong spot, you can move it. Make sure we turn on that there. So we've got roll right, or looping, I should say. We'll come to f this frame, key, uh-oh. I accidentally keyed on the wrong frame there. Okay, key, 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 okay. So you should have it start here on frame 40 and then go to frame 44. And the very last frame here, we're gonna add a new method track, player, of course, right click, insert key, roll animation finished, save. Wanna make sure that roll left is set to looping as well. And let's see, the only one we haven't done yet is roll up, right? Come in here, find roll up. Here's the first frame of roll up. Here's the second one, key, 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 key. And then we need to add a new track, call method track, player. Insert key, 
roll animation finished. Okay. There we go. So we should have all of ours set this to loop. Now we can go into our animation tree here and we need another state inside of our animation tree. And we're going to have this connect to idle as well. So we'll create a new blend space 2D. We'll call this roll and we'll connect our idle to this. So we'll have our click on transitions. We'll connect to idle and then back here. So we've got transitions between the two and we can come into select our role and edit it. And we'll make sure to set the blend to the little dots. Let's see, it's inactive. So I want to set our animation tree to be active so that we can see these updating. We'll come to add some points. We'll add one here, add animation, roll left, add one up here. Oops. Before we add one up here, we want to change this to 0.1, this to negative 1.1. Then we can add it up here, add animation, roll down, add animation, roll right, and then down here, add animation, roll up. And then we'll switch back to this and we should, we're still, we're not seeing an update here. Oh yeah, we got to make sure and play it. So let's play our roll. And come in here and you can see we can now roll in all of the directions properly. Perfect. So come back and s press the little auto thing here to play idle again and turn off our animation tree so it's no longer active because we activate it in code. Come back into the animation player and make sure to turn off of turn off loop on all of these roll animations so they no longer loop because we don't need them to. And then we can set our um, animation back to our idle state here. Okay. So now we've set up our animation tree. We need to come into code and make sure and set the blend position on our roll. So we're going to do it in the same spot that we do everything else here. We'll call this roll blend position. Okay. Inside of our move state. Now we already have our roll state here, but let's create a function for it. And we'll create it in between here, in between our move function and our attack function. Roll state, it'll take delta, and then we'll do, just do pass for now. Now we need a transition to this just like we have a transition to attack. So we'll say if input dot, well, let's create an action for this inside of our input map. So come into project, project settings, input map, we'll create a new action called role. And we can add a key here. So I'm going to do the K key. And then let's do the Z key. And I'm not sure I actually like space for our attack anymore. I'm going to take that off and I'm going to do X. So if you're using the arrow keys, then X will be attack and Z will be roll. Uh, but if you're using WASD, then J will be attack and K will be roll. Close that. And then we can have our transition here. We'll say if input dot is action just pressed roll state equals roll. So we're changing to our roll state. We need to make sure and call our new roll state function. So roll state delta. Okay. And this will properly set our state. The problem here is that once again, our state doesn't actually do anything. So if we switch to our roll state, we just kind of get stuck there animating can't do anything about it. So let's actually make our roll state function do some stuff. Let's drag our output down and get rid of it here. And what will the first thing we'll do is set well, we're going to need a roll vector variable. So we'll come up here, we'll say var roll vector. Now this variable we need to store 
our roll vector inside of our, our move state. So basically what we're gonna do, this will allow us to roll in all of the directions that we can move in. It will remember the direction that we're moving in, basically our input vector, and it will allow us to roll in that direction. But it only remembers it, it only sets that roll vector while we're actually attempting to move. That way you can't roll in place. So if your input vector is zero, then it won't update this roll vector. So we actually don't want our roll vector to start out at zero. We want it to start out facing the direction that we're facing, uh, that the player sprite is facing. And currently we're facing down. So we're gonna set this roll vector to uh, down. Vector two dot down, okay? And then inside of our input map here, we're going to set our roll vector. So we'll say roll vector equals input vector. But we only do this if we're not zero, right? Because if our input vector is zero, then if we press the roll key and it, this will be set to zero and our character won't roll, they'll roll in place, which is what we want to avoid. But if we, if we update this only when we're moving, then even if we stop moving, the last time that this gets set will be the direction we were moving in before we stopped. So then we'll remember the direction we were moving in and roll in that direction, or essentially the direction that our character is facing. And that's what we want here. So once we've done that, we can come into our roll state and we can say velocity equals max Let's see, where do we set our max max speed? Velocity equals roll vector times max speed. And this this roll doesn't have any sort of a this roll doesn't have any sort of a acceleration to it. It just instantly reaches the max speed the minute you press the roll button. Now this is our normal max speed and we want our roll to be actually a little bit faster. So we're gonna do max speed times 1.5. The other thing we could do actually is to create a roll speed constant up here. And I actually like that idea more. So we'll create a roll speed and we'll set this equal to 80 plus 40 is 120. So maybe 125 will be a little bit faster than in my other one. And then we can come down here and multiply by roll speed. Roll speed. I think that's a better plan. And we need to make sure we update our roll animation, update to our roll animation in here. We'll say, let's see where, here it is. We'll say animation state dot travel roll. And we should be able to save, and this should work now. Oh no, we forgot one last thing. The problem now, why are we rolling in place? And then we have some momentum afterwards. Well, it's because we're not actually calling move. So we have our velocity equals move and slide. I actually wanna create a function for this where we update this. So we'll create a new little function down here. Uh, we'll put this between our attack state function, our roll animation, we'll call it function move. And this will take, does this need delta? I don't think it needs delta. It doesn't need anything really. So we can just say, copy this into here. So velocity equals move and slide velocity. And then up here in our move state, we can just call move. And then inside of our roll state, we can also call move and that will allow us to easily call that inside of any state and I'm trying to decide I don't think I like the sliding <laughs> Yeah, I don't like the sliding. It's too much to, to have it slide that much. So we can 
we can set it to not slide at the end of the animation. We could, inside of our roll animation finished here, we could set velocity equal to zero. And that should fix the sliding, I think. But that's a personal preference. Maybe you like the sliding. Hmm. It is, it does feel pretty jarring. I wonder if we just did, I wonder if we just halved our velocity and we got to fix that because we apparently face left, not down. Having the velocity feels interesting too. I don't know. I'm not sure what the best solution here is. In my reference project, we don't have any sliding and uh, I, I don't, I've definitely changed some things along the way. So I'm not necessarily sure what exactly was different. Oh, that's going to kill me. We got to make sure and set our roll vector to left here. Left. There we go. So yeah, I'm not sure exactly what was different. Maybe it is just the actual speed that I set it to. Like maybe I need to be setting my roll speed to not quite as fast. So, you know, 120. That seems like a very minor difference. Maybe my friction's lower. That could be it too. I've got a much lower friction. I don't know, maybe the sliding isn't too bad. It just feels like we travel really far in our roll. You're committing to a lot of movement. Now if you try and turn around, you kind of slide. It's a big commitment. I don't know, it feels kind of good actually. The more, the more I get used to it, it was jarring at first because I wasn't used to it, but I think I like it. And I still think if you wanted to reduce it, you could have it reduced here in the roll animation finished. Just set your velocity to something like velocity equals velocity times 0.3 or something. And that would, that would give you, well, that's too jarring too. Let's try 0.8. So then our velocity is 80% of our, yeah, we get a little bit of a slide there, but not too much of one. So you guys can decide that kind of what you want this number to be right here. And maybe you just set velocity, velocity equals, yeah, this is, this could work here. I'm going to just leave the sliding in, I think. Well, I don't know. I kind of like this in between here where we don't slide a ton, but we do slide a little. But you can see we can roll in all eight directions and it feels really nice to be able to roll. So this video was sponsored by my Kickstarter backers for the One Bit Godot course. I'll put a link to that in the description. Thank you all so much for, uh, for your support. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If you did, be sure to give it a like and a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos like this. In the next video, we will be working on starting our enemy. We're getting close. We're getting close. I think this series will end up being about 20 to 25 videos. I'm, I'm not 100% sure because sometimes videos take longer or shorter than I expect and I end up doing more or less. So we'll see how things go moving forward, but I'm excited to continue working on this series with you guys and I will talk to you all later.